Some like it hot. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Scott, Edge of 3D. It'll go over me here. Um, you already know that. You tuned into the channel. So, um, update on PLA. Our favorite filament. Well, my favorite filament. It's cheap, it's easy to print. And as you've seen in uh, I'll say the video, probably come up here, maybe over here, uh, on my uh, high temp PLA uh, launch video, I printed everything on an ANET A8, printed just fine. So, I, uh, I, I ran the high temp PLA through all of the normal tests using the advised temperatures print settings that uh, Polymaker supplied me with. And layer adhesion was was not great. Um, in fact, it was bad. Still usable, but not what I would like to see. Several people made comments about wondering if um, bumping the print temperature up would help with any of these. So, unfortunately, I'm out of black and Polymaker's out of high temp PLA, period. So I had to run some tests in colors that I had on hand, which for the straight high temp PLA, um, I didn't want to use the pretty colors, the uh, fire gradient. Um, that's too nice a filament to use for testing. Uh, I'll do something with it, I just don't know what. Probably more Flexi Dragons um, to give away. So I used a gray. Um, and then for the glass filled high temp PLA, um, same thing. I have boron, not boron, I have, um, I'm printing a boron with the filament I have, which is called Power Tool Yellow. Um, it's printing right there, right now, a V0. The final parts of a V0 printing. So, had to go with white, because that's the other glass filled that I had. So, as you can see in a way earlier video, I tested the theory of does color matter on uh, on strength and stuff. So link up here somewhere to that one as well. Does the raising the temperature of the um, Polymaker High Temp PLA help? Um, <laughs> hell yeah. So the first test I did was I printed it at 250 degrees. That's these here, um, right here. These are printed at 250 degrees nozzle temperature. And the tensile strength, 193.1. Let me look and see what it was originally. Uh, PLA, high temp PLA, x-axis yield, unannealed as printed, 174.64, 193 and 195 on these two. So it did improve the tensile strength at 250 degrees. Um, layer adhesion, 250 degrees. On the original samples in black, as printed, not annealed, 44.2 kilograms at 250 degrees. Now, mind you, I only printed two of these, so these are not results that I can put on my uh, page. I'll link it down below. We'll, we'll go look at it here in just a minute. Um, 250 degrees, it's upside down. 250 degrees, layer adhesion, 96.8 on one sample and 100.4 on the other, where the I tent PLA that I did originally using Polymaker's recommended settings, 44.2. So more than doubled the layer adhesion at 250 degrees. So the next step up was 275. And I'm not going to try to print any higher than that because I don't know how stable that PLA gets at that temperature. And I really don't want it crystallizing in my nozzles especially on the CD4 back there where the nozzles are $60 a piece. Um, but I did take it to 275. And at 275, um, tensile strength, 
it actually, one sample was a little bit lower at 183.6, one sample was a little higher at 194.5, and the layer adhesion, now mind you on these, both of these, they didn't break. You can see where they stretched. At 275 on the layer adhesion, uh, both of them broke at, well one is 99.6, the other one was 99.0, so we're going to call it 99. So it really didn't help the layer adhesion going up another 25 degrees. So for me, for the high temp PLA from Polymaker, the non-glass filled, I'm going to set my profile for my printers to print these at 250 degrees. I can see a difference. As soon as they get some more black in stock, I will run a full set of tests at 250 degrees same as I did before, annealed, unannealed, and uh, I'll, I'll add that to my React chart. So as far as glass filled, I only had white left um, other, than, other than the power tool yellow right there. And um, yeah, so um, it... it improved a little bit. Tensile strength on it, that that came up quite a bit, I think, here. Let me look. Um, actually, no. Let's just go ahead and jump over here to this screen. Let me, uh, you can see right here, tensile strength on the high, high temp PLA glass filled as, as printed, 204. Um, both of these broke 183.6, 194.5, so it did not help that. Um, layer adhesion. Oh no, wait, hold on a second. The glass field was 216.4 and 214.6, so it did come up a little bit on the tensile strength. On the layer adhesion, uh, I got 50.5 on one sample and 58.1 on the other, so it did help a little bit that, on that. Mind you, that was just only two samples of each piece. Two of these, two of these, and these did actually break. They exploded. Um, so, again, as soon as I get black back in stock on the glass field and the regular, I will run a full set of tests again on those. While I was at it, I forgot one PLA, and that would be what I use for my gears, for my dragsters, and that is the Polymaker Polymax PLA. So I went ahead and ran a full set of tests on it. That's an IZOD test piece. I don't know where all the rest of the brakes are, but we'll jump over here and take a look at that right quick compared to the rest of them. And it has been added to the uh, chart you'll see here. So where it yielded at, it yielded at a lower um, number, 146.6 average. So it, it was lower than all of the rest of the PLAs as far as the x-axis, the tensile strength. Uh, yield point, kind of right in line with all the rest except for the... Um, the unannealed uh, glass fiber black. Uh, break point, well, big fat NA, it didn't break, it just stretched. Layer adhesion, it, it was up there between regular PLA and PLA Pro, I was just under PLA Pro, I guess, 123.5, so it, it's okay, and it might benefit from higher printing temperatures too. I printed this at 220. Um, direct threads, you know, it looks like the chart almost didn't change between layers and direct threads. Heat set, you know, same as PLA Pro. We're just going to call it the same. And here is where this material shines. Um, if you're into 2A, this is your material. Look at that. 75.5 on the IZOD shock test. Um, let's just compare this to every filament out there. The only other ones that come close are ASAs, the uh, Polymaker Natural ASA, which has nothing in it for coloring, and the ESUN Black ASA. 
we get down here to the PLA Max 75.5. So it's top of the chart. PLA Max, it's if you're if you're into 2A, this this is your material. Um, again, and I'm going to get a roll of this in black. Um, I'm going to run it, print it hotter, and I'm also going to try annealing it, and then I'll put it on this rig with the weights on it, like I did all of these materials, and we'll rerun this test here and see, you know, if it sags or doesn't sag. Of course, PA6, um, nothing compares to that for heat rejection as far as in the Polymaker line of the stuff that I did on this test here. So that's it. That's a quick update on the uh, PLA. Um, that's the end of my PLA testing as far as Polymaker goes on the initial benchmark tests. Now I'm going to go back and do some tests with some different temperatures and see what that does. Um, it's already been proven on the uh, high temp PLA, the non-glass fiber version, that especially 250 degrees, that's, from what I can find, that's a pretty sweet spot for layer adhesion and strength. So, um, impressed with it. But Now, uh, this time next week, it'll be Sunday morning at uh, Midwest Rep Rap Festival. That's where I'll be. I'm told I'm in the secondary building where they're going to be doing the death racers and the dragsters and the battle bots and all of that stuff. That's where they're having me set up at. I will be there. Uh, the tester here will be with me. My original tester, it's not in here. Um, the upright one that breaks the hooks, I'll have that. And I'll have my IZOD tester. It's actually out there, the hammer swingy thingy. So I will have all my testers there and actually a filament manufacturer, distributor dealer is bringing some material they want me to print and test there at the show. I'm not gonna, not gonna give any of that away. You have to show up at the show or watch the videos after the show. But uh, so I will be printing materials at the show to test at the show for a manufacturer. And last but not least, if you watched my video talking about going to uh, Murph, uh, I will be giving away my Creality K1 printer that used to set right there where the CD's at now. Um, I just I've got too many printers, I don't have room for it, and I don't want it to just sit and rot in storage because I got it, it was one of the very first generation ones, it had its hiccup with the uh, extruder overheating or you know heat transfer, heat creep in the extruder. Uh, they sent me a, a replacement parts overnight, I got them the next day, fixed it, I've never done anything else with that printer, I just print with it, so um, watch the video. See if you can figure out how to win it. And if you're the first one to come to me with the right information, at the end of the day, Sunday, it's your printer. I have to stay in my booth till the show's over because I have to print with it. Because that's the only printer I'm bringing. And also, all of that uh, filament that you see up there and what you don't see up here and up here and back around behind there and over in that room and over in that room, I'm bringing a whole bunch of filament to give away. It's free. You don't need anything. You just walk up. You see something you like, take it. Um, any filament that I have there that I'm not currently printing with, it will be uh, it will be free for the taking. Some brand new rolls never even open. Some rolls that there's maybe 100 grams left on it, but it's free filament. I'm out of room. I've got more filament coming in to do testing with. This stuff is just up here collecting moisture. And yes, it's going to have to be dried. It's out in the open. You're going to need to dry it, but it's free. So thanks to each and every one of you that watch these videos all the way to the end. Um, comment down below what you want to see me do next. Hit that thumbs up button if you like it. Hit the thumbs down button if you don't like it. Um, subscribe to the channel. That helps. Um, we're nearing on 6,000 subscribers. And uh, if you want to be notified when I drop the next video, hit the little bell icon. It's down here somewhere. As always, peace out. We'll see you on the next one.